Trina Thank Edmonds. you, um, now, Lass Kian Corla. Um, I'd like to begin tonight, Kian Corla, by saying that I have the greatest of respect for aspects of the ideology behind the motion that Sinn Féin has presented to the House. I have no desire to see our public assets sold, nor does the Labour Party. Uh, we do this with a heavy heart and with regret. The realities of government and of a crisis such as this mean that we do not have the luxury of opposition parties in sticking dogmatically to our ideology. Sinn Féin knows well that ideology must sometimes be compromised when faced with political reality, as they have demonstrated themselves to their credit during the negotiations leading into the Good Friday and St Andrews agreements. Sinn Féin are sometimes criticised for their for the in incongruous nature of their criticism of the government in this jurisdiction, when compared to how their party colleagues are carrying out their duties in the North. Sinn Féin rightfully defend themselves from such criticism by pointing out that the Northern Assembly and Executive are forced to work within the budgetary constraints laid down by Westminster. Perhaps from time to time Sinn Féin might recognise that the government here is similarly constrained, both by financial and economic realities, and also by the political realities of international agreements entered into and on behalf of the state by the previous government. One minute remaining. Such as the one that has mandated this sale of state assets. How much have one time minute. have I? One, one minute, minute, is it, oh, Councillor? I thought I had more time than that. Um, a review group was set up by the, previous by the previous administration to ascertain which of our state assets could be best used to promote growth and investment in the economy by means of disposing of some of the equity therein our state assets. For example, with the sale of the stock of Quilcha, it is imperative that its wide and varied number of forest tracks and walks remain open to the public and that there is no restricted ac access while the trees are being removed from the land. Appropriate assurances and guarantees must be in place so as not to block access to these wonderful facilities across the country. But I'd like to point out as well, Count Corley, that only this week IBEC said that as a result of tough decisions in recent years, international investors are again looking favourably on Ireland's long-term growth. Long-term growth and long-term prospects, suggesting that there will be no shortage of interest in investment opportunities in Irish assets. Warnings exist over the sale of some national assets and that we should not make the same mistakes that were made in the past, for example, in the sale of Aircom. The goal is to find the right balance between selling off some state assets to the private sector while retaining state control over those strategic assets. In the past, studies have examined public versus private, but this will be different. This will offer the possibility of mixed ownership where the state retains a stake in the asset. This offers the chance of reaping the benefits of private ownership while keeping state control over what would be looked upon as strategic assets. Um, I can almost hear the hoots of derision from across the floor if there was enough here to, if there was enough here to do it, um, last count quarter. But the reality is very stark for you all. It is we, the government, who have to make these tough decisions. It is we, the government, who are elected by the people. And it is we, the government, who will bring prosperity back to the people of Ireland. Thank you.